So recently, it came to my attention that orcas have, for some ungodly reason, started to attack flipping boats. Now, this is especially interesting because orcas in general have never actually attacked a human, at least in the wild, despite being absolute menaces to seemingly everything else with a pulse. They are, for example, known to flip seals around like they're goddamn burgers and even stealing the tongue of other whales while they are still alive. And that's not even a fraction of all the other war crimes they commit on a daily basis. But when it comes to humans, it's almost as if they know just how revengeful we can be. So they have always just let us do our own thing. In fact, orcas have even historically helped us hunt whales and even guided lost fishermen back to shore during stormy seas. So what exactly is it that has suddenly prompted them to attack these gosh darn boats? Well, this whole beef started back in 2020, along the Iberian Peninsula. Not only were three actual boats with persons on board sunk, but 250 other boats were also severely damaged. Another scary detail about these incidents is the fact that the orcas seem to understand the boat's weaknesses. They would specifically target critical components like the rudders. Literally, some John Wick-type behavior going on here. Now, this suggests that this is not simply just them goofing around, but them deliberately trying to put the vessels out of commission. There are several theories going around trying to figure out the cause of these gangster behaviors. And the first probable cause is linked to their diet. And I don't just mean orca diets in general because orcas around the world actually have very different ecotypes depending on location. This basically means that orcas from different types of environments have specialized traits and unique adaptations for their specific habitats. Uh, this also includes dietary preferences and behaviors, which basically explains why we see so many strange and unique hunting styles around the globe. And in the case of these Iberian orcas, their favorite food happens to be the Atlantic bluefin tuna, which is also highly valued by humans. With this in mind, you can probably start to understand where this is going. But to fully understand their true motivation behind these attacks, we have to delve a little bit deeper into these conflicts. You see, leading up to these boat attacks, the competition for tuna also escalated the interactions between boats and orcas. Several fishermen even reported orcas trying to snatch their fish straight off their lines. Such close encounters resulted in several orcas being hurt by both the fishing equipment, as well as them basically getting hit and run by the boats. And orcas are no fools, so over time, these events could have been passed down generations and slowly made orcas perceive boats as a threat or unwanted tuna competition, which could explain why they developed aggressive behaviors against them. With all this in mind, we can now look into the leading theory going around. The theory basically suggests that one or a few orcas got extremely salty after getting slapped around by these fishing boats on a daily and basically started to teach other orcas in the area to attack boats as a form of revenge. This would in turn create an evil circle where every orca eventually would adapt this distaste against boats, making attacks more and more frequent as well as better executed. Now, this theory does imply an extremely complex level of learning and social behaviors. So without solid evidence, it remains highly speculative. As per usual, most scientists, including these orca nerds, are very careful when it comes to attributing human-like emotions to wild animals. For example, labeling these attacks as a form of revenge might be a bit far-fetched. But another reason could be the fact that these absolute units are simply playing, basically doing a bit of tomfoolery in their spare time. And sometimes they might forget how big and strong they are, causing massive damage to the boats. This also makes sense considering the fact that the orcas doing this are mainly juveniles, which are generally known to engage in more risky behaviors. But whether it is them just playing around or actually calculated attacks driven by revenge, it's all the same for the locals who are actually having their boats sunken or badly damaged. But please do let me know down in the comments what you think is the driving force behind these attacks. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, orcas have for a long time been known to actually be very helpful and even protective of humans at sea, which is part of the reason why it is so hard to understand these sudden changes in behaviors. Congratulations, you've made it past the halfway mark. And if you've enjoyed the video so far, then please do consider absolutely annihilating that like button. Okay, let's get back to the video. Historically, orcas have, for example, been known to assist whalers by herding baleen whales into bays and even towards whaling ships. The orcas would basically alert any ships nearby of the presence of baleen whales. The orcas would then expect a form of payment for their devious efforts. They would usually get stuff like the whales' tongues and even lips, basically anything the whalers did not want. Just imagine being these baleen whales, finally thinking that they have gotten on the good side of the orcas and about to hang with them in the bay, only to get absolutely backstabbed when humans show up, blasting them with all sorts of life-canceling harpoons. 
Orcas have also been reported to help lost fishermen to shore during harsh weather and even keeping other predators like sharks at bay. Orcas have actually never hurt a human being at sea. Although when it comes to captive orcas, it's a whole different story, which I will probably get into in another video. But either way, this shows that orcas and humans do have some sort of special relationship, as orcas pretty much eat and mess up everything else with a pulse, except humans, which surely can't be random. So these boat attacks really do seem to be very special cases indeed. But for now, the best explanation we have is just speculation. Anyways, let's move over to bigger and more important questions. So could orcas really survive during dinosaur times? And more specifically, the Cretaceous period, which was a time when the ocean was filled with Leviathan-grade life forms literally designed to trigger your thalassophobia. For example, the Mosasaurus, Tylosaurus, Leopluridon, and that's just a few of the many other ungodly monsters the orcas would have had to subdue. The orcas would also have to deal with the warmer climate, which kept the average sea temperature at tropical levels. This is something the orca could manage, but they do generally prefer colder waters, as they have a lot of blubber insulating them. But this could be overcome by diving down to deeper and colder water more frequently, and maybe adjust their activity levels to nighttime. Now, when it comes to those big-ass life-canceling machines, I really don't think that would be a deciding factor at all. You see, Orcas generally travel in pods, and these pods can sometimes exceed over 75 members, which is way too much power for any creature, no matter the size. Even today, we can see them absolutely destroy other massive whales and sharks. Although they don't really fight back though, so they might be screwed. Now, it's only natural we take a look at what godforsaken creature the orcas actually evolved from themselves. Prehistoric orcas made the modern version look like a goddamn McDonald's Happy Meal toy. Meet the Basilosaurus, a massive 18-meter-long prehistoric whale that lived around 40 million years ago during the Eocene epoch. This absolute unit is also the predecessor to the blue whale, as well as other smaller whales, including orcas. So the version we have today is basically the family-friendly edition. The Basilosaurus had an elongated body with relatively small flippers and a fairly long tail. It also had very sharp and conical-shaped teeth, perfectly adapted for hunting fish and smaller mammals. But unlike orcas, they are not thought to have run in pods or possess the same complex social structures that orcas have today. But with that size, it was probably not needed. Another cool fact is that the name Basilosaurus literally means King Lizard. It was basically the real-life version of Godzilla. And thank God the whole whale lineage in general decided to opt out of those massive teeth and focus more on krill consumption instead. Just imagine having blue whales swimming around with swords as teeth. The ocean would be completely off limits at that point. Anyways, that's the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, then maybe watch some of my other videos on screen, and I will see you in the next one.